Hello guys, welcome to EZTV Presents Tech View, another episode uh, today. I'll discuss about uh, how to configure BSN cluster uh, in the SX environment. So basically, what do you need for, what do you need for uh, creating a BSN cluster? So the first thing um, is the requirement is you have to have um, at least three node, like three host, uh, and also, you have to have, you can do um, hybrid mode and also the flash mode, the, which is the disk uh, type. But um, in, in, in this demonstration, I'll do with HDD because I have HDD, but I'll convert one of the HDD to flash drive because there is a requirement. So I'll show you guys practically how you can do that. And also uh, I'm doing on my home lab and I don't have that many physical hosts. That's why I created a nested ESX site. I have one host on top of that, I created a nested ESX site. So how to create an nested ESX site? Um, I, I'm gonna show you in this video because I already created another video. Um, I will put on the description my other videos link. Uh, if, you, if, you, if anybody wants to uh, watch the, how you can uh, create an nested ESX site, you can do it from there. So I'll post on my um, description box on, in this video. Um, so if anybody uh, don't subscribe yet my channel, please subscribe my channel and also uh, click the bell icon to get my uh, next update and there's any other video. Um, thank you and please stay with me. Uh, end of the video, until the end of the video, um, because I'm gonna show you uh, practically how you can configure piece and cluster. All right, so let's go. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. So, um, all right. So this is my B-Center actually. <clears throat> Basically I have, this is my main uh, physical host, physical server on, and this physical server I created nested ESX type, which is nested uh, ESX I0102 and 03. If you click here, you can, you're gonna see this one is running as a virtual machine. Um, so I just created some uh, network adapter. I just added some network adapter on the virtual machine. And also there is a little bit configuration. I just wanna show you guys in a one shot, which is how you can create it. So it's nothing, uh, if you have only one host, just um, create a virtual machine as, as you do for Windows or any other machine, like same as. Um, but only one thing you need to remember, if you want to consider this one as a nested ESX sign, that is when you create a virtual machine, make sure on the CPU option, check hardware virtualization, just check mark on it. Check mark on it, that's it. And um, hard drive, if you want to do a vSAN, if you have a plan to create a vSAN, you need more hard drive. So, in, in my ESXi, I did a, a first disk is a 30 gig, which is I install ESXi and another 30 gigs, I, I reserve it for some reason. And also I add another two hundred and thirty. So I actually, uh, total three disks is enough, but I added total four, uh, which will look good because maybe in your physical, in your real environment, you will have more disks. That's why I just, once extra one disk, that's it, nothing else. You can do with the three disks, one disk for uh, use XI installation, OS installation, this, the other two, you can meet the recent requirement. I'll show you on the configuration side. And so what do you remember? Just when you create a virtual machine, you just need to do the hardware virtualization check mark on it. That's it, nothing else. And extra I did some things because I have some plan to configure on the, this three nested SXI host. My, my plan is to assign two NIC card for management, two NIC card for uh, distributed switch, and other two is maybe one for SAN and the phone demotion or something like that. So it's 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 not mandatory. If you want, you can add because you know, as you know, like uh, one um, virtual machine, you can add a maximum ten network adapter. It depends on you. So that's what I did, and also the other thing is. Uh, on my this B center, I have um, so in my this ESX, I have one B center. B center is hosting on this uh, my master host, which is my physical host, physical ESX side. 
So, and after that, inside the vCenter, I created a distributed switch. And on the distributed switch, I created uh, on the distributed switch, I created a VLAN, which is VLAN 90, and this is different subnet. And this subnet I assigned to my uh, nested insect site. But not only that, one thing you have to remember, if you want, if you want, um, like the reason you created an SDSX site, inside the SDSX site, maybe you want to create a cluster, right? And inside the cluster, you, 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 you're supposed to going to create uh, some virtual machine. But whenever you create a virtual machine, those machines going to get the, this 90 subnet IP addresses through the uh, VM network, virtual machine network, right? Uh, so, but those machines not going to get any internet connections. So for getting the internet connection on this, those virtual machines inside this nested ESX side, what do you have to do? On the VLAN, whatever VLAN you created on the distributed switch, if you just right click on it, you have to go to um, edit settings, and you have to go to security, and from this case mode, you have to accept it, and forget transmission, you have to accept it. Otherwise, you cannot ping this one, those virtual machines from outside. But security-wise, Proverse Casbo is supposed to be rejected. All three are rejected. But this is exceptional. It's not, you, you, you never know, you're never going to see this environment on your real environment, like your office environment, because nobody do uh, necessarily sets on the office environment. This is a demonstration. And that's why, and this is also my home lab. That's why I'm just showing how you can do that. Because uh, if, if you can uh, do a uh, necessary sex site, so you can practice at your home. That's why I'm just showing you guys. From skills mode, accept and forget transmission accept. Don't forget it. See here, my nested ASX side. I added VLAN this one. So that's how it, this VLAN is communicating through this. See here, my, my original machine is in 10.15.0.11. So zero, submit, so and this is 90. So it's different, right? But now I will be able to access all those machines. Plus, if I create any virtual machine inside this this Excel host, I will be able to access them, access those machines. So, and in the same B center, I added this Nestle SXI as a ESX machine. So the, right now, and also I created a cluster here. So right now it should look like this it's look like it's a ESX host, like as a physical host, right? So I have three physical hosts. And this is under one cluster, under this is under cluster. But DRS is recent. So DRS is uh, turn on, but it's manual mode. Or uh, you can just say uh, for some reason, uh, like if you want to create a vSAN, uh, your DRS should be manual or part of, and also your um, turn off, and also basically availability is supposed to be turn off whenever you're gonna configure the vSAN. So right now this tutorial. Um, I'm going to show you how you configure the vSAN, right? This is our target. So for creating a uh, vSAN, um, make sure your if if you have high availability, which is enabled, just turn it off and DRS turn it off. So that's why it's not going to make any problem. Just turn it off. That's it. Okay. Now, where do you have to go? So the requirement is you have to have three hosts. So we have three hosts, right? And network-wise, if you check the network, network-wise um, virtual switch. So it's management and VM network. So everything is fine. And I have two NIC and NIC here. So if one NIC goes bad and they're gonna work. So configuration, everything looks good. So for creating a BSIM, a BSIM configuration, why do you have to go first? So you have to select the cluster. You have to move your mouse to the cluster, and then you have to click on the configuration tab. And when you click the configuration tab, all the way bottom, you can see this set. Maybe you're gonna select this, so you have to expand it. And then you have to click on services. Um, services, so when you click the services, on the right side, you're gonna see this set is turned off. What do you have to do? You have to go to the configure options. And then single site cluster, two host, mission cluster, stretch cluster. So I'm not going through all those uh, settings because uh, this is my lab. I'm just going to straightforward with single site cluster and click next. And in this in this uh, section, you don't need to do anything. 
just click next and then claim this right so by default is already checked that's why you are able to see all those drives that means uh, on my ESX side I in the beginning I showed you uh, I added total four disks so out of four one disk I use for um, uh, ESX installation and how many disks is left it's total three right so each and every host has three other drive which is not claimed yet which is not configured yet that's why it's showing in here so i'm going to for understanding i'm going to uh, uh change the view so i'm going i want to see the host view so each and every host has three and see uh the one 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 drive size is 30 gig another one is 100 gig, another one is 150 same thing all other but it's not mandatory you have to have same if you have something different it also work it's gonna add so now the vsim requirement the vsim requirement is at least if you want um we're gonna configure it as a uh, hybrid mode not flash mode so hybrid mode configuration hybrid means you have to have mixed right so at least right now everything is hdd so at least one drive you have to use as a flash drive Mark as a flash, right? But which one you should supposed to do with flash? So for configuring vSAN, there is two things. One is capacity tier, another one is cache tier. So cache tier is not showing here because all are HDD. So capacity tier, that means whatever storage you're gonna sign as a capacity tier, that will be your storage. That will be your vSAN storage. It will show you as a vSAN storage, which is capacity tier. But Cache tier is not showing here because cache tier requirement is you have to have a flash drive. But I don't have any, I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm just going to mark this AGD as a flash. So I'm going to mark the smallest one as a flash. And now you'll be able to see cache tier here. See, cache tier. So I mark as a cache tier. So all 30 gigs, because for caching, you don't need, you don't need to have that, uh, that much storage because it's not going to show you here. But like on, on in, in the cache storage, you cannot use for your master machine. So that's why I reserve only 30 gig for each host. So I'm going to convert it to uh, mark, I'm going to mark uh, uh, mark this HDD as a flash drive and also cache tier, right? And mark as a flash and cache tier. All right, so I already fulfilled one requirement. Now another requirement is you have to have a Capacity tier in each and every host. So capacity tier, I just marked this one as a capacity tier, which is 150. Now see 150 added here. And and, and claim cache is 90. Why is 90? Because each host I have 30. So 30, 30, 30, that is 90. And capacity tier I just added from the first host, which is 150, and it shows on here. Claim capacity 150. Now I am adding another one as a capacity tier. Now it shows 250. So I just complete first host, then second host. Um, this one, capacity tier, same way. Capacity tier, see, it's gonna add it on, on top. And then same way, capacity tier and capacity tier. It's, it's pretty simple, very simple. So now I have claimed capacity 750 because my all drive is the same size. But if you have anything, say for example, this one is, uh, instead of 100, maybe the third host, it, this one is also 150. In that case, what will be happen? You're going to see here 800. All right, so I believe you guys understand. Now, see, configuration correct, right? Everything is, looks correct. So the claim, uh, path, uh, one you have to claim as a capacity, and otherwise you have to uh, as a cache. So cache, you can select one, it's fine. And, if you, and multiple drive, you can. Um, claim as a capacity tier and capacity tier is your actual storage. All right, so I'm going to click next and it's fine. Click next and finish. So it's going to take a little bit of time and I'm just going to put it top. And you have to just wait a little bit. It's going to take time. All right. It's Uh, uh, sometimes 
um, whatever it shows, the total is supposed to be 750 gig storage, right? Sometimes you will not get the actual things because of the burst flow, because I'm doing everything on the nest cell. Let's see. Finally, to the work we, we, we got to get. Look like so far everything is good. Just wait a little bit here. And in short time, So, um, I forget to show you guys one thing, which is supposed to do beginning of the BSEM configuration, which is for BSEM, you need a BM kernel port group. And I don't have any configured BM, I, think I, I don't have any BM kernel enabled for BSEM profit. So you can add a center switch for that. You can create a separate BM kernel for that, but I don't have it. So what I can do, I can use the management network because the management network has BSEM configured already. Yeah, my BM kernel configured. So I jumped, you just need to select the host and go to the configuration and BM kernel. So again, if you want, you can add one extra BM kernel, but I don't have enough time. That's why I'm just doing this. Um, Okay, let's do one thing. Create one because this is a tutor, right? Or it has already error because I believe it's what it was trying to check the uh, what is called BM kernel. So I'm going to create actually BM kernel. How are we going to do the BM? How you can create a BM kernel? So for creating a BM kernel, do the same thing. You just need to choose an IP address for BM kernel, right? So you can do the same switch or you can create a different switch. What do you want? So if you want to add a network, you can a network adapter next. So if you want the existing, then you can just go next. Or if you want new one, new switch, then you can add new switch. But remember one thing: if you want new switch, then you have to add a new card. So you know, I, I want to show you guys everything. So add a new standard switch, and then add a new card. So we have. Plenty of nickel, right? So maybe this one I can use it for. Okay, next. And then name it um, BSEM or Centrophy. Sam. Or you can say, uh, yeah, BSEM. BSEM. And uh, in here you can leave it like this or you can use it. And make sure you click BSEM. Next. And also, maybe you can enable the motion also in the same one, if you want. But the other thing is, you have to have an IP address. Then dot, 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 maybe dot, one, one, ten. Five. Next. And I have created one. And for this one, I'm going to do the same thing. Um, I'm going to create a network, BM kernel for. So I'm showing you guys how you can create a BM kernel in a new switch. So a new switch. Next. Add. This new card. That's next. And you can say send. And make sure you select on this end. This name doesn't matter. Whatever you want, you can put it. This is a network level. You can change it. And also, I want to pass the uh, motion traffic to this also. And this one, next. And use static ID. So 11. And then yes, next. Now I'm going to do the other one. The other one, the same thing, right? Add network, DM kernel, click next. 
Like this one. Next, this one. One carrot list. Click next. This one. But the, this vision is selection is mandatory. Next. And assign an IP address. So this one is I know this IP is empty. So you have to find out to use. And finish. Ah, let's see. Scan empty. Okay. You configure this and cluster now you configure it because previously it was trying to find out the storage. Now I can see here data store. I don't know what it shows. It shows zero. See now it's working because it's it's get, it's found the BM kernel before it was just looking for a BM kernel. Wow. See here? You already got it, right? See the change? When I just first time checked, it shows zero. Now it shows 749.95, which is 750, right? Which is correct. All right, so one mistake I did, you guys understand, right? I supposed to create a BM kernel code group before I configured the BSIM. I'm supposed to enable vSIM on the BM panel port. But I did it later on. That's why in the beginning we have the LR. So make sure whenever you do, before you configure the vSIM, make sure you configure BM panel port for enabling vSIM. All right. So now if you can check each and every. So it's showing here, right? So next second host, data storage showing the same amount, right? See, the same storage. Now I can try to deploy the machine. So I have some template here. I don't know, the template is actually in another format because um, the BMR is using BMFS format, but this is using different format. So, but my temper is in BMFS format. I don't know it's gonna take it or not. Let, let's check. Let's deploy one machine. So it's just a machine name. I'm just trying one. If I can have uh, so anyway, I don't need to select. I didn't have to create. Oh, okay, it's application, right? So I can pull it this. Uh, it doesn't matter. You can pull it outside. And cluster from center cluster, maybe this one. Network interface. Which, all right. Before I do that. Before I do that, one thing I have to do, which is, so my distributed switch is assigned for on my physical host, not all these three hosts. That's also I'm supposed to do before I show you guys. But I didn't do that, now I am doing. So you guys also learn how to add um, distributed switch on a new DSXI. So these three DSXI is new in this environment. And because before adding these three hosts, I configure the uh, distributed switch. So you, now you can send the distributed switch. So you can learn it to the how you can send a distributed switch. So this is the distributed switch, right? But right click on it, add and manage host, add host, click next, new host, add all, because I want to add all three, next, and next, and then assign a neck card. So I'm gonna send two NIC card for distributed switch. I have plenty of uh, NIC card. So the first one I wanna assign uplink, the first uplink, okay. Oh, no, no, sorry. I'm going to remove it. Why I'm going to remove it? 
Right, I'm going to do it again. This one, right? Assign, uplink. And one thing you have to remember because I have three hosts. If you have five hosts, if you want to add five hosts together, if you want to add 10 hosts together, if you want to add 50 hosts together. So you don't need to select each and every host. It's two nick, two nick, two nick, two nick, two nick. So if all the host has the same nick empty, in that case, make sure the same nick is empty for each host. In that case, you can use these options. Apply this uplink assigned to the rest of the host. I click OK. So all the hosts will check BNIC3. Now, BNIC4 BNIC assigned as a second uplink. And I said apply for the rest of the host. OK. So for the rest of the host, I don't need to select. It's already selected. See, or it automatically is selected. Automatically selected. And click next. And click next. And click next. And finish. All right, so now my all host, if I go here, go to the configuration, check the virtual switch. You see, syslab, distributed uh, DB switch, uplink. And no BM is assigned here, that's why it's not showing in this side. But the other thing is shown here, right? This end is shown here. Um, this one is empty because I didn't listen to machine. So let's start with the machine. Um, let's go here and this one, no VM. And try again. Name, name doesn't matter. Next, complete cluster. If you select complete cluster, DRS no. okay, it's not DRS mode, that's why. All right, so here, if you need DRS is not enabled, that's why. But if you use DRS is enabled and it says enabled, in that case, you can select the cluster name. And um, cluster DRS will mount, uh, put the machine on any one of the hosts. But right now, my DRS is not enabled, mode is not. Uh, uh, Turn on, that's why it's disabled. That's why it should be zero. So I can select any host, it's fine. Now, data store. I'm going to select the checkers. I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, it's taken. The business storage consumption would be 120 big BC space and reserved for flash. Okay, it's fine. Uh, oh, that's less than. So I'm deploying a machine. It will take a little bit of time. So if I want, I can deploy another machine from here. If this is Windows 10. I can say deploy. Cluster here, or maybe here, other host. Click next. Same thing we're doing here. Click next, and next, and finish. So I'm just deploying from the template. So actually, this is going to take it's gonna take time. All right. It's not an issue. So here, machine is deploying. So it will take time, a little bit time. You have to wait. Maybe it's going to take 15, 15 minutes out or 20 minutes. So I'm not gonna hold you guys here. Uh, so that's all actually. My main target is to uh, configure vSEN. So we successfully configured vSEN. And also on that new vSEN, now we are deploying virtual machine. And we are utilizing that vSEN. That's all for today. Um, thank you guys, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't forget to click the um, bell icon. And also, if you think this video is helping you, please give a big, big, big uh, thumbs up and also share with your friends. Thank you. Thanks for watching.